Welcome back. We hope you had a really good lunch break back there. So we would like all of you here to know, uh, we're, we're going to flash this slide real quick. Just a reminder that the views and opinions expressed here are of our speakers speaking in their personal capacities. They don't represent those of SGX or Equities Tracker. And so right now, there will be two sessions, one in Conference Hall 1, which is right here, and the other in Conference Hall 2. So right here, Adrian Chu and Kenny Lowe will be discussing the best asset classes for volatile trading environment. Uh, so sorry, the uh, that's happening in Conference Hall 2. They're talking about the best asset classes for a volatile trading environment. So if you're interested in that, that's with Adrian Chu and Kenny Lowe over in Conference Hall 2. Here in Conference Hall 1, folks, I believe we have had enough of this pandemic. It's been two of the worst years of our lives. And now that we can finally put that behind us, what should we look out for post-COVID? So to help us with that, we have Mr. Isaac Fung, an SGX Academy trainer and remisier from Philip Capital, as well as Mr. Charles Lee, who's a fund manager with Philip Capital Management. So Isaac, Charles, over to you, gentlemen. Okay, a very good afternoon to everyone. Sorry, uh, had to do the share screen thing. Okay, my name is Isaac. So I'll be covering post-COVID trading themes today. So uh, basically, uh, this deck of slides was prepared um, quite early on in March. Okay, uh, so there's a little bit of it being dated, all right? So, but I will do share some new themes that have uh, resurfaced at least within the coming, the, the week that just passed, okay? Now, um, the contents, uh, what I'll be going through, uh, just a single slide, self-introduction. Uh, this part will be the meat, a little bit of the meat also, uh, managing expectations in setting the market approach uh, straight. We got to approach the market in the right spirit, in the right manner, okay? And basically, I'll be sharing with you the portfolio management perspective. Thereafter, we move on to the, the main themes and the associated uh, counters that I myself, I'm putting uh, my clients uh, getting my clients to also uh, putting their money into these uh, counters, okay? Then after that, uh, I'll close and then I'll hand it over to Charles, all right? Now, uh, a little bit about myself. So I actually do have a representative uh, license number. I'm multi-licensed. I'm a representative of uh, Philip Capital, Poyums. You will be more familiar with this term, Poyums. Okay, so I have the CH CFA, CHFC, and the CFP. I, I have my own website. Take note of the website. So if you missed this uh, session, you can, in due time, I will make this deck of slides uh, public as well. So you have to refer to my website. Okay, so isaacfang.com. I've uh, got some awards before. So um, a lot of people will be uh, familiar with uh, Unit Trust Wrap, so I'm more big into this uh, securities wrap. The underlying is actually security, it's not unit trust. Okay, so okay, setting the market approach straight. These are a few uh, statements I live by. All right, uh, some of it a little bit funny, but it's true. It's totally true. Okay, the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. Okay, basically, overvalued can stay overvalued for a very long time. So you short the market, you are paying uh, financing fees. Okay, uh, yes. Okay, undervalued can also remain undervalued for extended point in time. And some, in some cases, you may not even have the chance to uh, realize the gains because uh, it gets privatized. Okay, uh, people should remember Tiger Airways. Okay, markets are efficient, not always correct. Okay, different, different uh, terminologies there. Uh, anyway, we aim to be profitable. I don't aim to be correct. I aim to be profitable. There's no shame in uh, making wrong calls. You just have to cut your positions. For as long as the music is playing, you got to get up and dance. But when the music stops, don't be the only one dancing. Okay, It's uh, quite a funny term. Uh, the context behind this was, uh, of course, when the mortgage uh, crisis happened. Uh, okay, So Citibank was uh, still, still dancing. 
to a certain extent. Okay, pre capital preservation is more important than pride. Uh, this line is very important in the sense that uh, we should cut losses when we know that we are wrong. Okay, uh, yeah, this term uh, is to enable people to cut loss. Forward stats are not stable. This is very, very important. Okay, whatever I'm saying today also uh, is not cast in stone. There are always the changes, all right, new developments that may alter views. Okay, still under this uh, section, all right. Uh, this citation is taken from Simfas text. Those of you who subscribe to your advisors, you can ask them about this. Uh, they ought to know because it's inside what they have studied. So investors, they want good returns, right? But uh, the anticipated market view has to be correct. Okay, the anticipated market view has to be correct. And the strategy and the structure used to capture the market view has to be appropriate. And the pricing of the structure must make sense. So form a view, align the actions, manage the risk. So this is, you learn something about uh, investment planning here. So many, so, so many people are focused on the entry, they forget about post-trade management. Okay, so the risk management tools, okay, time, head size, stop loss. Okay. Now, uh, this one is extracted from the CFA Institute. Okay, this is portfolio management process. It might look very complicated, but actually inside there, there are two loops. I don't know if you can see my mouse. Okay, the top loop over here has got to do with the investor. Investor nuances. Okay, the bottom loop has got to do with the market. Because often at times in forums and stuff, uh, we always hear people, uh, they are debating. They are, they, they are in the debate quite adversarial. Uh, which I find that actually it doesn't have to be adversarial. It's just that uh, different perspective. Okay, sometimes people are arguing on the investor perspective. You know, they shouldn't be taking on so much risk, that kind of a thing. But somebody is arguing a scalper, for example, a, a scalper will have a different perspective on the market compared to an investor. Very different. All right. Namely, of course, time horizon, of course. So there are two loops, and these two loops are to be combined. Okay, in the overall flow. Okay, so you are unique like everyone else. How do you want to express your view? So later on, the uh, fund manager, okay, Charles will share with you more details. Okay, uh, but I always like to talk, share with my clients and educate others about uh, asset allocation. So how do you want to express your view? So lately, the uh, gold run up, right? So due to the Ukraine uh, Russia conflict, so people are talking about gold. Now, there are a few ways to express your view in gold. You can buy the gold ETF, which is the collective investment scheme, right? ETF. You can buy CNMC uh, Gold Mine, which is a gold mining company. Okay? Or you can also look into derivatives. Okay? Um, gold futures, for example. All right? Um, on the topic of uh, derivatives, so later on, there will be more information. Okay? Now, so, the meat. With this, so what are the themes associated for consideration? Climate change. It's all about. It's, it's all. I don't know about you. I feel that the weather is getting a bit hot uh, of late. Um, so these are the news headlines, extracts. Okay, that points uh, uh, to this theme as well, to a certain extent. Okay, so your HDB car parks to have uh, electric vehicle charging points, right? by 2025. Who is going to do that? Okay, um, so this extracts from uh, BT Business Times. Okay, so firms in Singapore removed to, uh, move to shrink emissions and uh, carbon tax bill. So they are planning for solar. Okay, so uh, there are a few solar players, all right, uh, in uh, on, on listed on SGX, all right, uh, but I'm more focused on the infrastructure part of things. So all the gas prices are going up, okay? So there's this justification for alternatives to go up. Alternatives would be in the form of wind, solar, okay? Now, this thing about electricity, right? Source and conversion are separate matters. What, I, what am I trying to drive at? Now, we get electricity if it's via burning coal. That's not really environmentally friendly, 
okay, we, we burn, um, all this stuff is not so friendly. But why do we still uh, like electricity so much? So while we while con while deriving uh, electricity, okay, is not a hundred percent conversion, but electricity can be stored and when converted to other forms of energy, okay, from electrical energy to kinetic energy, all right, all these are quite close to uh, 100%, okay. So the world is uh, shifting in preference to greener energy and this will likely uh, assist, okay. So infrastructure preparations, uh, solar ins ins uh, installations and uh, electric vehicle charging stations. So my choice pick, all right, is uh, Semcorp Industries. Now, uh, Semcorp Industries is engaged in the production and supply of utility services, as you can see in underlying there. And from the chart, um, there is one breakout. The breakout is quite early already, now, but the trend will persist. Okay, uh, so we are looking at probably right now some sideways movement. This here is the weekly chart. So I expect this weekly chart to go a bit sideways a little bit. All right. Once it moves to the moving average, once it touches the moving average, it probably move another wave. Okay. This is one good wave. All right. If you are if you are a believer of the Elliott wave, there should be more waves to come. Okay. Uh, but it has already started the breakout. This is a high volume here on the week. This is a daily chart. This is the weekly chart. This is a daily chart. You can see a very high volume uh, breakout over here. And it's sustained, so there's a, some sort of like a small flag of sorts and it starts to push up. So it's one, two, three already. So one, two, three in a one wave. All right. What's the next theme? Travel recovery. So I anticipated this uh, much earlier. You can see. All right. Uh, then of course we have the announcement now. Uh, this we just recently All right. So the latest is uh, last evening is that we can go to go JB. No need to take uh, any, no need to poke your nose whatsoever already. Alright. Um, yeah, but different countries are still handling uh, COVID differently. Alright. Uh, with more VTLs, in fact, they do. This this term will soon be done away with. VTLs, okay. So tourism is definitely returning. So the Genting has uh, started to move up already. Airlines, aircraft servicing. Okay. So actually the, 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 the biggest signal uh, was actually when SIA started hiring. Yep. So for me, when I heard that SIA started hiring, usually when certain firms start hiring, it's a, it's a, it's a very, very reliable signal. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So, but my choice, okay, it's not SIA, but uh, my choice pick would be SIA engineering. Okay. Uh, people forget that planes also need to be serviced. Even planes that are put into cold storage, you need know, to bring it out. Uh, yeah, you have been, you, in the cold storage, you still start the engine, you keep the engine warm and all that kind of thing. But you still need to service the aircraft, okay? So SIA Engineering has uh, done quite a breakout. Maybe what you can consider is uh, going on uh, retracements, okay? Going on retracements. Uh, what other theme? I'll be looking at uh, cybersecurity metaverse. All right. Um, so Google buys cybersecurity. Uh, Thirty people arrested for all the OCBC phishing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so and of course we also now have the uh, the fourth arm. I don't know. Other than the Air Force, Navy, and Army, uh, our military now has uh, a digital force of sorts. Okay. The choice pick for this. Okay, uh, Starhub. Uh, this is the weekly chart. This is the weekly chart, and this is the daily chart. All right. So this is a breakout already, from what I observe. I deem, I I'm also a proponent of what is known as the VSA volume spread analysis. Okay. So there's a, a shakeout already. Shakeout after a breakout. Big boys institutions they don't want you to be on board. They will shake you out. Uh, over here, you can see that it's being supported. This is definitely a good support area here. Alright. So, it's in the cybersecurity end. 
the end of the day, you still need data, lah, huh? Meta metaverse, whatever, and all that, internet data and stuff like that. Okay, so telcos are my, my choice picks. Uh, okay, so the web 3.0, artificial intelligence, opinions and thoughts. Okay, so now the metaverse is will happen. It will happen. Okay, what do I mean by this transnational uh, nature? Now, uh, in the past, ordinarily people would like to gamble. Uh, they take a cruise ship out into those cruise to nowhere. Once out in open waters, then the gambling tables come out. So, Metaverse, I think one of the... I definitely, very, very certain casinos are very interested in the Metaverse for its transnational nature. So if, uh, let's say for, Gen for example, Genting, you know, if they invest in the Metaverse, uh, people in the States or in, U or in Europe, they can go into the, the Genting Metaverse, so to speak, and gamble. It's just an idea. It's just an idea. It's not cast in stone yet. Okay, but the transnational nature of the Metaverse, it, it has a lot of opportunities. Okay, so, um, yeah, um, spiritual opium thing, uh, yeah, that's China, okay, but uh, I'm also very certain that the relevant regulatory bodies will regulate the hell out of the, the, the metaverse and so on. Now, I will choose uh, Singtel, okay, uh, they're bigger than Starhub, of course. Uh, so, from a technical point of view, you can see this uh, candlestick, in, in terms of candlestick, it's called sandwich, okay, we have very big bar candles side by side. So there's a lot of fighting, the bulls and bears are fighting. Alright, uh, and from uh, from this perspective, you can see the weekly perspective is, is decided that it wants to break out. Of course, uh, other slants on uh, Singtel is, of course, it's a big component of the STI index. And uh, so, uh, yeah, it can be played for... for because of the index now, index factor. Okay, now I have come to more or less the end, but this week I want to share what other themes that have just popped up. Because uh, bearing in mind that actually the um, this deck of sites was actually prepared much, much earlier. And consistent with uh, things are constantly evolving. Um, yeah, constantly evolving. Okay, so there's a need for portfolio management. So on the, of late, was the thing that uh, uh, came to my mind this week was food security. Okay, so it turns out that uh, Ukraine, uh, Russia, um, the food security thing, uh, basically I came across this statistic, okay, that 15% of the world's cal food calories, food calories, Okay, you know what's calories, right? Calories can come from many different forms. But 15% of the world's food calories come from wheat. Okay, and we're going with what's, what's happening with uh, Russia. We might see uh, agri agricultural commodities uh, spiking. Okay. Um, but we don't exactly have a lot of agri place uh, in, uh, in, in, in SGX. Okay, or uh, rather... Uh, on S list of S STI, uh, we have proxies, okay, so uh, Wilma, Golden Agri, uh, these are some, Olam, oh, but Olam is uh, in sold off their yeah, Agri business, uh, but yeah, so these are the counters that can be a proxy for the theme of uh, food security. Uh, with that, okay, um, that's it, and I suppose right now there's a little bit of time before I hand over to the next speaker, would there, are there any questions uh, you'd like to ask me? Oh, for questions, you have to submit it via the Slido, this app Slido. I'll just give it another minute or two. If no questions, I'll hand over to uh, Charles.
Charles, are you ready? If you are ready, then I will stop share. You can. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm ready, actually. Okay, uh, there are no questions. Seems like a good job. <laughs> Over to you. Hi, uh, good afternoon I, uh, to everyone. Uh, my name is Charles. Uh, I'm not so sure whether uh, many, many of you have seen me or maybe heard of me before, but I guess it's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm more, more, I think over the past few years, I'm, I'm working more behind the scenes of uh, uh, managing portfolios uh, within the, the Philip group itself. Um, I joined Philip uh, for almost 21 years. Uh, I, mean, I, mean, has been trying, I mean, has been moving around within the group. And um, and things that which I have seen over the past uh, twenty one years, uh, sorry, yeah, in the sense that um, it, it really really uh, unravels your 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 mindset, uh, especially uh, the things I have covered uh, uh, in, in the mandates itself. I mean, uh, so currently I'm actually covering both on the the private side of things and also the the public side of uh, the the mandates itself. Uh, we, we at, at Philip Capital Management, which uh, I, I come from currently, uh, we do have a, a, a number of mandates, uh, uh, both active and, and passive itself. So that's I mean that's the beauty of, of our, our I mean the business model of our asset managers uh, these days itself. I mean, ever since the the good old days, uh, the, the GFC itself. I mean, passive have actually become more more uh, prevalent in that sense because of its low cost. Uh, uh feature itself but uh yeah just just this is just a, a quick brief on on on, on what of uh, my introduction itself like, but just that um uh i didn't give a, a, a bit of I'll, I'll give a bit of a, a perspective on on the market itself uh i think isaac also has mentioned some some of the key themes on the uh post covid uh which we are currently moving towards and we are not so sure whether uh we are we of course uh this endemic will always be be, uh, be there. Uh, I mean, ever since we have went through this, this uh, three, I mean, two two and a half years of, of, of uh, you know uh, fighting the the uh, virus, um, a lot of things have changed, and because of COVID, uh, certain things has become more opportunistic. Just like Singapore property resale market property itself, I mean, we have never expected the you know the public housing has become so uh, uh, buoyant as compared to the pre-COVID era itself but of course a lot of things also have changed because uh we can see uh teams like uh environmental issue has become more serious and and, and the government has started acting on it uh since uh, two years back and um, i mean given the kind of um uh massive of uh, injections into the the global economy by the the, the developed country central bank itself uh, i mean you can, if, you, if you look at all the, the balance sheets of the the, the fed the, the BOJ itself and also the uh, the euro uh, uh, euro I mean the ECB itself uh, a lot of cash has been injected that's I think also partially because of that uh, we are having this situation now of of, of this uh, inflation uh, issues that we are facing I mean if you compare back with the <clears throat> uh, GFC at that time I mean a lot of things I think um, Everyone thought there would be more more inflation because of the injection, but this time round the injection was so much bigger, and that's so there are other issues that's that also causing the the uh, uh, inflations uh, because of COVID has actually created a lot of uh, supply dis disruption as well. So market has become very very volatile, and uh, good thing is that uh, we have actually come up with this. Uh, I think we spent about almost like more than I think two years to prepare for this uh, this L and I product. Uh, it's called the, the uh, leverage and inverse uh, ETF. Uh, it, it's, it's first of its kind in Singapore. Uh, it, it tracks the uh, MSCI Singapore index, which is, is uh, broadly used by institutional or even like uh, uh, long, long, long managers. Uh, you know, 
using MSCI as a benchmark itself. So we also have the component of this, uh, in, I mean, the, to, to take a look, to take a view on when the market is down. Uh, this is, I mean, we, we launched this, this uh, ETF in 2021, December itself, okay? So what, what uh, I'll go through the, the whole deck itself. Um, basically, the um, I'll introduce what, what r and products. I mean, a lot of people is, is not familiar, but I guess a lot of people is very familiar in, in using CFD uh, or using, uh, you know, borrowing of shares to, to you know, to take a, a downside view of the market itself. But uh, I mean, I also will cover on the, the differences between the uh, RNI products on, uh, for, for ETF versus the other uh, names. I mean, the other, I mean, the products names which I mentioned just now. So, uh, of course, uh, who are they suitable for? It, it can be for for uh, 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 both traders and also for for uh, long -term, long term investors as well. Okay, and. Uh, of course, I'll be touching on the uh, how LNI products can be used uh, in that sense. All right. So what what are actually leverage products is actually to, to deliver uh, multiples. Um, we have most of the time when we launch a, a, a leverage products, we will at the same time we will launch an inverse uh, product together with it. And uh, this time round, uh, our product is actually is is a two times leverage, and uh, inverse is actually a one times uh, inverse. Uh, uh, feature itself, and uh, there are many many uh, LNI products in the market. I mean, especially in Hong Kong or US itself, but it tends to have a, a bigger uh, uh, multiply multiplications on sorry multiples on the the leverage side of things. That's I mean, we, after much considerations, I think we, we came to the conclusion that two times actually was much a, a, a better, you know, or rather, it's a safer way uh, in in some aspect. To 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 uh, to to I mean to provide to the clients itself. So if you are looking at the inverse products, to, I mean it seeks to deliver the opposite performance of the, the benchmark that we're tracking, which is the MSCI in, index itself. And uh, for this LNI ETF itself, uh, they they are I mean they they adopt a trust structures and also it's, it's traded on the exchange. I mean that's the beauty of it, yeah. Uh, the target user groups so. Uh, a lot of times uh, we are actually targeting at the, the, the traders. At the same time, uh, uh, long long investors also can can take opportunity making use of this this product to to uh, to hatch off their positions in in the market itself. So uh, general investors will be looking for trading technical trading tools uh, uh, who are qualified to buy specific investment products itself. So. Most of the time, I think retail investors, uh, they need to be uh, specified as a um, SIP in, in, so that in order for them to, to, uh, to, to uh, invest in this, this product itself. So basically, the, the r and products are actually are, are trading tools. And uh, one thing is that, uh, to note is the uh, for, for leverage products or even the inverse products itself, it's not for, for us to, to buy and hold for the long term like stocks itself. Uh, because there's always the uh, some some technicalities that uh, I'll, I'll showcase to you later. That uh, are, there, are this are this uh, ETF actually not not supposed to hold for the long term. Unlike those uh, long ETF, actually we can, we can I mean the, we should invest in in the, the replication of, of shares itself, uh, which we can hold for the long term itself, right? Um, So LNI products actually they are typically designed to provide multiples and inverse multiples of the benchmark of the daily returns and uh, the contains uh, and derivatives within the portfolios which enable them to, to leverage up and deliver inverse returns. Um, a lot of times the the LNI actually they, they make use of the futures and swaps. Uh, in Europe actually they 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 use swaps, but uh, in in Asia itself I think index futures are, are more commonly used itself. And uh, at the same time, I think uh, our, our design of our, this uh, leverage products, uh, we do have a, a, a buying of an index underlying constituents, uh, also form part of the, the, the leverage uh, portfolio itself. And as for the inverse products, uh, an ETF itself, uh, we, build, we purely use the derivatives uh, for the MSCI uh, Singapore futures itself. So that's why you can see uh, since uh, the least little margin required for the derivative exposure itself. Uh, the excess cash, actually, most of the time, we will uh, put it into the money market funds 
uh, for the portfolio itself. So for, take for example, if you look at this uh, uh, chart itself, I mean, it, it, it showcases the, the two times leverage and the one times inverse product itself. So for example, when we created the fund itself, I mean, uh, our NAV is actually about uh, 10 mil. And 70% of this, this 10 mil actually will go into, we'll, we'll put it into the, the MSCI uh, uh, securities and 30% will be uh, kept in cash itself. And, and because of this, this 30% of the cash itself, uh, we are able to invest in the, the MSCI index. Uh, uh, sorry, we are able to in, in invest in the futures, which allow us to, to, to balloon, uh, to leverage up to about 100, I mean, two times, which is 20 million overall value of the, the whole uh, mandate itself. So that's how you can see actually the, uh, uh, the, the 130 percent Simski futures will be able to give us a, a, a big buffer on the, on the upside itself. Whereas the inverse leverage itself, uh, sorry, the inverse product itself, uh, we purely use that 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 uh, 10 mil actually to 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 um, to buy the downside of the the Simski futures itself. And just a bit of technicalities of the, the daily management of the, 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 the two products itself. Uh, because of the objective uh, to deliver multiples and, and, and inverse of the, the performance, uh, every day, uh, these two products has to be rebalanced. Unlike, unlike um, uh, our, our long, long ETF itself, uh, which, which don't require daily rebalancing itself. I mean, that's why because of this daily rebalancing, uh, there is this, uh, the, the performance tends to, to exhibit a uh, path dependency itself. So um, the performance of the RNI over the longer time period, more than a day, will not be the same as a simple leverage of, uh, of the performance of the benchmark over the same period. So this is this uh, the issue about this uh, rebalancing that we have been doing. This is also creating this uh, path dependency issue. But of course, the if you look at the path dependency, uh, the issue itself uh, in a trending market, the RNI uh, product, whether up or down itself, I mean, uh, if, you, if the market is actually trending itself, uh, it the RNI products will outperforms the simple leverage uh, inverse or even the inverse performance of the benchmark it tracks itself. When, uh, but of course, when the market is volatile, it, it, especially when it's trading sideways, uh, it will be not so great. Uh, in terms of the the you'll be detrimental you have a, a create a more uh, less effect on the uh, the RNI products performance over a longer period of time uh, for RNI product I think there's no tracking errors uh, that we, we are looking at uh, unlike a, a traditional uh, uh, classic I mean a classic uh, uh, long ETF I think most of the time we always tend to track as closely to the to the bench I mean to the to the index that we are actually uh, designed for. So if you look, for example, uh, look at the example of this uh, uh, two times leverage, you can see actually the, the red line uh, over a longer, after a one day period, actually it tends to, tends to perform much better in the trending market uh, than the, 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 the design uh, performance of the, I mean, the two times performance of the uh, underlying index accumulation itself. So this is what we are talking about on in as a path dependency. So because of the path dependency uh, effect, that's why the market is actually so I mean, the the leverage is actually giving a better performance. But if you look at the um, so yeah, if you look at the uh, sideways markets uh, performance for two times leverage might not be uh, so effective. Uh, also because of the path dependency uh, issues itself. Okay. So most of the time, people will ask about uh, how is R&I products, uh, what, how can they be used? Uh, I'll say it, whether it, is it an up market or down market, most of the, most of the time, I think uh, we can apply the both uh, uh, R&I or even the inverse uh, in, the, in the bull or bear market itself. Okay. And uh, the leverage and shorting uh, does not need the margin or, or I mean for, for for as I mean, for other other products like uh, CFDs, you do need a margin uh, in that sense itself, or for individual investors itself. Uh, of course, it's also an alternative for, for using uh, derivatives or futures, which also requires margin and uh, market exposure in a quick, convenient as a, a way of doing it. Because this is all this. Uh, I mean, the product is actually exchange traded, 
So effectively, once you have a trading account, you can actually uh, buy into the, the downside if you have a view that the, the, SD, I mean, the MC, MSCI is actually going down and uh, it is very, very efficient. And um, of course, it's also very uh, good for hedging. Uh, it makes uh, for efficient capital management, especially for, for fund managers as well. As well. Uh, it also gives uh, the kind of opportunistic trading uh, for, for uh, retail investors or traders in, in the markets. So take a look at example of the, the hedging. Uh, for example, you, let's say you own a portfolio of stocks with a market value of 100,000 itself. And then uh, because of some, some issues that you feel that, that I mean, especially the, the I mean, uh, inflation or even some, uh, the, the Fed actually high hiking interest rate in the near term itself, then you might have one, uh, a, a bearish short term view and you can take, a, take uh, advantage of this, uh, Inverse product to, to buy into to protect your your your, your down, I mean your downside performance of your your, your portfolio of stocks uh, by buying into this uh, one times inverse leverage itself. Then of course a lot of times it's always the uh, the view the preparation work of your decisions to to take a hedge or even like for, for traders also to 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 take opportunistic view itself. It, it also depends on how much uh, information that actually we have garnered. In order to make, make take a view on, on whether to hedge or not to hedge, because at the end of the day, hedging also becomes a, 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 a I mean, you have a wrong view, your hedging will become a cost to your overall uh, fund performance, portfolio performance. So that's why, uh, and, and it's always the, the uh, I mean, between the traders and the, the fund managers, we, we tend to have a, a different view, uh, a different, I mean, way of looking at things when it comes to taking a decisions to, to, to long or to, to, to short, I mean, to hedge the, the portfolio itself. So when the market actually uh, hits the, the target uh, level itself, uh, then we will actually will take profit on the, the inverse product. And this, this, this profit actually will, will enhance the, the portfolio over the long term itself. And uh, it's, it's, it's right in the sense that uh, a lot of managers, they, they do um, I mean, I mean, the, this is also another way for, for managers to, to actually to outperform the market, but it has to be very, very concise and uh, in terms of, of, of understanding the, the mechanics of the, 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 the turn of the market itself. Uh, I'm using a chart of this uh, MSCI, uh, which it digs back to 2018 itself. You can see actually uh, beginning of 2018, um, and uh, this chart actually will showcase the the, the valuations. Uh, I mean the the I mean the, the MSCI Singapore actually has been trading above the, the the one standard deviations during the period of 2018, the beginning of the period of 2018 uh, of the P range itself. So to, to us, it looks a bit more more uh, rich in that sense. But it's not a clear clear sign that actually uh, whether we should uh, hedge. This is always a, a, a indications. Of course, there are other things that we also have to factor in, like uh, you know, during January period, I think Donald Trump ignited the, the trade dispute, so so actually it caused a lot of fear in the market. So that's why uh, it gives us the kind of opportunity also to hedge our portfolio itself. Uh, and also the, the also uh, we also have has factored in the Singapore GDP growth actually has declined to about four point six from five point three in Q four versus Q three in twenty seventeen itself. So actually the the, 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 I mean, the, the economy actually has, I mean, the growth actually has, has weakened. So these are, are, are negative views that actually we give us uh, an a, a opportunity or rather to, to, to say, hey, um, I think maybe it's time for us to, to include a, 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 a downside uh, view on the market so that actually it sort of protects the performance of our portfolio itself. And uh, if you look at the um, MSI, uh, subsequently, it, it went down about 13.8% over the 2Q uh, 2018 over the fears because of the fears of the Sino-US uh, trade war itself. Uh, these are basically examples that actually you can find uh, uh, during your, your, your course of uh, investments itself. But of course, there are many, many things that we also we have to factor in uh, when we look at the, the, when we take a view on the market itself. Okay. Uh, 
and a lot of times, uh, especially for for I mean for managers uh, uh, like us, we do have a, a, a we do construct a portfolio of of of, of shares itself of companies. Uh, we tend to I mean it can be ranging from sixty companies to to hundred companies to two hundred companies depending on the manager itself. But most of the time, we will tend to to create a, a, a non correlated uh, uh, portfolio of of companies uh, to be included. In the portfolio construction itself, so over time, it's it's, it's much easier to apply uh, to hatch off the whole portfolio using a ETF, uh, for example, like a, a one times leverage, sorry, one times inverse, uh, than to raise cash by selling off uh, across the board. And and, and selling off across, across the board uh, is is going to be very a bit a bit more efficient because uh, I mean you have to pick. Uh, the, the, I mean, even if you want to sell across, uh, it'll be very, very cost, costly at the same time. And so uh, it might not be so, so effective because of some of the implicit costs uh, involved in the, when, when, especially when you load up the, the individual uh, companies. And it also affects the overall uh, correlation factors within the portfolio itself. So by taking a, by using the, the inverse uh, ETF, I think it will be much better and, and, and uh, efficient in that sense. But of course, there's always a, a portfolio constraint in the sense that uh, we can't um, uh, raise too much cash uh, stipulated with, within the mandate. So this is this is the constraint which I think a, a lot of managers will face in that sense. So the, the inverse ETF actually will give a bad, very bad, uh, a, a good tool for, for many managers to, 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 to take advantage of. And uh, for traders, actually, uh, the, the leverage or even the, the inverse actually will give also a very, very good opportunistic trading. I mean, sometimes when you look at the earnings announcements, uh, you felt that uh, uh, the, the market, especially the, I think the last round when, when Fed uh, announced the, the hype itself, uh, I think the market rebounded uh, uh, in, in some ways itself because I think, uh, the, the of the of the 25 basis uh, uh, hike itself so these are, are things that uh, we I mean most people will take advantage of and also because of this we look at calendar effects and other uh, market turning points and, and and the leverage and, and both the, the the downside actually will give a very good good uh, tool for for, for many uh, investors to take advantage uh, if you look at the these are examples we should I mean theoretical examples for 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 bullish calls and this is actually uh, for the short-term bearish call itself all right if you i track back the, the the past 20 years for the msci index itself these are the month-to-month -month, uh performance on the money basis itself uh, you can see actually the uh over a period of, of 20 years uh since 2001 itself uh the there'll be declines there'll be be upside itself so that's why you can see it for the first decade of the, the, the 20 years, uh, the index actually declines on average about 39.2% of the month. Uh, uh, subsequently, the next subsequent, 20, I mean, 10 years itself, the, uh, you can see actually the declines actually has increased. Uh, the number of months actually has increased. That's why, is, uh, I mean, the index also has, has declined about 47% of the times of the month. You can see gradually the market is getting a bit more volatile uh, over the last 10 years versus the, the previous 10 years itself. So actually this gives a very, very good opportunistic uh, uh, indication for, for, for uh, traders or even retail investors to, to take advantage on the downside of the market itself. And, and moving forward, if you're looking at the, uh, we foresee the market will be even more uh, uh, challenging because of inflation, uh, especially when, when, when you're targeting, I mean, especially Fed is targeting 2% versus a 7% inflation itself. Uh, we, we are not very sure. We are also trading into a very, very uh, uncharted waters uh, since the, the 1980s. I mean, inflation has never gone so, so high. And how long will it stick? Uh, st be, I mean, how, how, how long will it be sticky itself? Uh, I mean, at least for, for one, two quarters, we will foresee which is also very, very uh, challenging for, for many uh, uh, components of the, the, the economies itself. When inflation is, is, is at a, a very high end for, for a long time, a lot of things will happen. Food causes, I mean, your food prices actually will, will rise. And uh, it's actually a very, very, um, and plus the, 
the oil prices staying above hundred hundred dollars per barrel itself, I think it gives us a very very uh, uh, challenging moments, I would say. So this this uh, uh we'll see more more downside as the, as uh, as the time comes in that sense. So that's why the 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 uh, inverse actually will give us a, a good opportunity uh to take advantage on the downside to to enhance the performance of our portfolio in the long uh, on over the long term itself um not so sure whether you can see the 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 pink line itself so for for those who's, who's looking at opportunistic trading itself i think sometimes you i mean traders will just use uh, the on the short term they use the moving average line as, as an indication for cost itself these are very very technical itself uh um it will give you the kind of uh, opportunity once the price cross over the 50 days moving average and um and and uh, that then you can actually make a, a call on the uh to, to invest in the two times leverage it gives you a very very good buff i mean uh incremental performance uh especially for for this kind of uh, downside market when it, especially during the 2008 when the market recovers itself and and these are a very good indication to uh, short-term indications uh, and I'll say these are very, very opportunistic trading in that sense. And um, if you are looking at more on the, some, some traders also will, will look at the, the uh, over a long-term trading uh, strategy itself. And uh, I'll say that they are uh, both, both uh, uh, product actually will give a very good, uh, 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 I mean, a tool for, for training trading itself you can see when i mentioned just now the the path dependency because of the path dependency itself if the market is actually trending over a longer term it will be much better as compared to uh, to apply this these two instruments as compared to a, a volatile market itself you can see actually the the uh, yellow uh, arrow itself is indicating the the price actually has has crossed over the the 200 days uh, moving average. I think most of the time when we look at uh, uh, trending, long term trending itself, uh, we will want to use the 200 days of moving average as indications. Uh, that that was back in 20, 2003 itself, and since then I think you can see the whole MSCI actually has trended up all the way to about 2007 before it breaks. Uh, November 2007, before it breaks the 50 days and even the 200 days itself. So these are uh, very, very good opportunistic uh, uh, long-term trends that uh, then we can follow in that sense. Even for uh, inverse two, for opportunistic market sell-down, you can see uh, the MSCI SG uh, crosses the 50 days MA in the mid 2006 and oh, I mean November 07. Uh, yeah. But of course, you you won't give you the kind of a, a, a two times downside itself, and that's that's what the product is being designed for. Okay, uh, in terms of product summary, um, you can see these are the 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 uh, uh, it's very very clear cut like, in the sense that I mean the benchmark it tracks the MSCI index. Uh, in terms of bought lots, uh, it's hundred hundred units per uh, per lot itself, and then the launch price for for both actually is uh, two dollars. And we launched this in first of December last year, and uh, it can be traded in in sync and, and US dollar. So, all right, uh, there will be management fees involved as well, and and dividend distributions as well. Okay. Uh, Okay, this is a, a very good table actually to compare uh, for for existing. Uh, market stakeholders because I believe a lot of uh, people I mean a lot of traders or investors they are also currently using uh, other tools uh, especially for DLCs or CFDs uh, these are the maybe even like warrants as well so uh, there are, in terms of the leverage factors itself you can see actually uh, uh, the, the the Philip uh, two times leverage actually is, 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 is a much uh, I would say safer in, in some ways uh, uh, to, to cater for the in retail investors. Again, DLCs actually will, will provide a kind of three times, five, seven times. Uh, margins also, it's, I mean, it's very, very high. Uh, CFD sometimes it goes above the 10 times. So our, our, our product actually is gives a very, very good uh, um, upside in terms of two times. And uh, if you look at the counterparty risk, uh, very limited because it's exchange traded. Uh, for example, if you look at... Um, 
uh, uh, futures margin. Um, okay, there's no, uh, there's, there's the, I mean, for example, for example, you look at a CFD, especially, uh, it's, it's very, very, uh, there is a counterparty risk uh, because of the, um, the uh, exposure is actually against the, the, the brokers itself. Okay. Uh, there's no maturity date. I mean, that's the beauty of it. You can, even if you want to, to short, uh, to, to, to take a negative view on the market itself, you can you buy and hold, unlike a, a, a other, other, other products itself, for example, CFT, uh, you know, uh, it, it, there's always a margin call involved uh, in that sense. So that's the that's a key, key key difference in, in that sense. Uh, minimum required exposure is two hundred dollars, uh, based on the, the the issue price that I mean we have uh, launched. Uh, trade on public exchange. We our uh, products are traded on public exchange itself. Uh, unlike CFDs, is not traded on public exchange. Uh, there won't be any false liquidations, uh, as compared to uh, other other products uh, like CFD, there will be false, uh, even like futures and margin trading. Also, there'll be uh, liquidations uh, and false on it. So, in terms of summary, uh, leverage products exposure. I mean, it gives a very efficient market exposure. So, for 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 uh, through the leverage exposure, less capital to put up, uh, can conveniently do it on the securities market and monitor with the rest of the securities portfolio itself. Uh, a lot of times when we uh, have a portfolio of shares itself, uh, especially, uh, for example, a dividend yielding portfolio itself, uh, this inverse uh, two actually will give a, a very good, uh, uh, for, I mean, good, good uh, tool for the, for the, I mean, for the managers or even the investors to, to take advantage of the downside of the market itself. I mean, we will, I wouldn't want to sell off my whole portfolio of dividend yielding uh, stocks, you know, just to raise the cash to take a, a negative view, and that that'll be very very costly as well. And uh, that's only to maintain margin or uh, roll over any of, of the contracts, uh, unlike uh, some of the margin or even like uh, CFT itself. And it's good for trading. Uh, committed uh, traders, uh, market makers are provide uh, liquidity. There's, I mean, for every ETF, I think most of the time our, our ETF we we do have our market makers uh, there to quote you, uh, quote the market itself. So that's that's to, to provide the liquidity there. Uh, some sometimes the uh, when, when investing in ETF, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, stake. I mean, a lot of investors they, they they claim that the market is not liquid. Actually, it's not true in the sense. Like, I mean, you, you have to know the the technicalities of the 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 the, the, the I mean the operations of this this ETF so there. So I mean, most of the time there's always a market maker. You have to get to the uh, get the brokers to to. To get the, to the market makers to code in that sense, uh, and there's also a low transaction cost, uh, so which includes uh, implicit cost itself. If you raising cash from a portfolio of stocks, will be you have a higher implicit cost, uh, which is the, uh, the the trading cost of the uh, underlying. You know, if your portfolio is big, uh, then it'll be, it'll be quite quite the cost will be higher. But uh, let's say. If you want to hatch off the, the portfolios through through this uh, inverse ETF, I mean, uh, it'd be much efficient. You don't have to bother about all uh, all the individual stocks in that sense. And uh, everything is transparent. Benchmark is used widely, as is, is widely followed by institutional investors as well, which is the MSCI Singapore. Uh, the main replications or uh, instruments, uh, the same scale futures are also uh, efficiently priced uh, in that sense. So. We are we are using the Simsky futures as the the uh, replication instrument. So intraday uh, live NAV pricing also available as as reference or so. So everything is quoted on the market uh, on the daily basis or even real time itself because of the there's a quote from the uh, uh, market makers. All right, thank you. That's the end of my session. Okay, so there are some, I saw some questions. I think it's quite targeted towards me. Um, <coughs> maybe you... Okay. Um, okay, first question I saw is, uh, is recession coming? Uh, so the, I need to throw out the question a little bit. To re Recession where? Recession in Singapore or recession in China? Recession in Russia? <coughs> or recession in the uh, US. The US employment data seems okay. I don't think a recession is going to hit this anytime yet. 
Uh, research in Singapore, I also do not think so. I think Russia is experiencing somewhat uh, difficult economic situation. Uh, okay? So as a recession is also about where. Uh, but I suppose I will elaborate a little bit more, at least from what I have my knowledge, I want to share knowledge. So the, the thing about recession is that uh, you want to talk about global financial crisis. For that, you require a uh, contagion effect. This word, contagion effect. So if you watch the show, The Big Shot, um, you know how, it, how the, the mortgage crisis uh, went to other places. Uh. So the last scare was actually the Chinese uh, developer, Evan Grant. All right. uh, there were other scares, uh, okay? but uh, the question is whether now Russia sovereign debt defaults will cause uh, defaults elsewhere. But I also do not think uh, it will cause a lot, a lot of damage everywhere. Okay, although it's something to pay attention to. Okay, so the, the, the thing about global financial crisis, you want to look for this term or rather pay attention to this uh, factor called the contagion effect. All right, so the mortgage crisis that time, yes, uh, the GFC in 2008-2009, uh, that one had a contagion effect. Okay, so I hope that answers the recession question. Because uh, now there's a lot of money flo floating around. And in fact, I think a lot of money is going to come to Singapore since we are quite favorable uh, in terms of managing COVID and then uh, as a regional center, uh, headquarters, uh, right? ASEAN. Okay, so I think a lot of capital flows will come into Singapore. So I don't think Singapore will experience a recession. Okay, but uh, we have to see the developing situation. Uh. Okay, next question I have, I saw is the, how is the current crude oil countries to deal with the solar energy? Could it be a competition to them? Now, history, uh, okay, at least when I was studying, <laughs> I need kind of review how old I am. We were talking about, you know, all is going to run in 30 years. Uh, it has been more than 30 years really. Uh, okay. Uh, but there, uh, some years back, they were talking about, or at least the last time, there was uh, some talk about peak oil. Are we there yet? I, I, I think we are roughly around there. Uh, but IPOs aren't what they used to be already. So, uh, you know, the Saudi Amerco, uh, the IPO already, uh, good things they want, usually good things they don't want to sell. Uh, you privately hold it, or why you want to sell? Right, so you get, you get my hint, uh, huh? you get my hint. So I believe these guys, I'm sure they would have uh, put their money uh, into all these alternatives as well. Uh. They've got so much money already, they've made money, so much money for uh. But uh, this solar thing alternatives has always uh, come up. The time when oil was about 150, long time back, okay, uh, 150 going towards 200, that kind. Uh, so people are talking about alternatives as well. It's quite normal. It's normal for when oil prices go quite high, too suddenly, okay, people start talking about alternatives. Okay, um, yeah, so the talk about the competition, how would they respond? I'm sure they have already uh, made a lot of money from their IPOs already. Lah. So I think they will just milk it for what it's worth. Lah. Um, I see another question. Is it still good time to trade oil and gas in SGX? What's your take on crude oil price in the next five months? It all depends on uh, what's happening with uh, Russia, isn't it? So um, I initially thought that the Russia-Ukraine conflict would end quite soon. But it doesn't seem to be so. So I think the oil prices uh, would remain elevated and I would I believe it would uh, remain move sideways for the time being. Okay. But it can move sideways in a very volatile way as well. Okay. So uh, okay. Uh, that's it. Is it a good time to trade the oil and gas in SGX? Uh, form your own view and your own play. Okay, uh, if I were to play it, I would actually <coughs> like to look at uh, San Marino. But uh, make your own place, lah. Huh? Okay. I don't see any more questions. Uh, the other questions are actually directed towards the LNI. Is there time decay in the uh, in LNI, Charles? Is there time decay? I would say there's time decay in the sense that because we we do uh, we roll over the I mean we invest I mean we roll over the contracts. Uh, I mean, on the subsequent months itself, like, and also, also because of the, the daily rebalancing. 
uh, there won't be any, I mean, oh, technically there won't be any time decay to, to speak off in a sense. And also the uh, the other questions on the market makers, uh, we do have market makers uh, for this L&I. Yeah. Okay. So we have a contract. I mean, we 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 I mean there's a there's a there's a so-called contractual agreement with the market maker they have to provide some some liquidity for a, a period of time itself so I mean fear not I mean all this uh, I mean all this ETF actually for for ETF uh we say we, there's a market maker involved law because we we have a contractual agreement with them in that sense. Then uh, a bit on the the recession part uh. I won't foresee any risk because there's no clear sign as a, a, a recession is actually coming. Because when we talk about recessions, um, first thing I think we have to look at, where, I mean, like what Isaac has mentioned, like where, where, which part of the world itself, so US, Europe, or even like, like uh, China itself. China is doing uh, easing now in, in some ways. Uh, and also, I think because of the, the locking up, uh, uh, it's also creating a bit of more uh, disruptions that we, we are uh, looking, uh, we have faced in the past one or two years. Uh, but I mean, we are not, not so fearful in that sense, like, in that sense because of for China, uh, I mean, the valuation has become much more attractive. And because the government is doing a QE, I mean, the quantitative, I mean, sorry, no, I mean, the easing through the central bank's policy itself. And, uh, uh, and, uh, one thing is on the, the U.S. side, uh, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the performance, economic performance actually has, 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 has also come out quite strongly. Uh, you can see actually the, the jobless claim also is the all-time low itself. Of course, all this will actually will also, uh, maybe it's a, it's a pre preview on, 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 on the, the inflationary pressures uh, that I think the Fed will have to face in that sense. Look, I think uh, everyone is talking about, uh, now the market is actually giving, looking at consensus of at least uh, uh, eight heights, eight heights, look. but we have about six meetings left. Look. So you can see actually, we, I mean, within the six meetings to, towards the end of the year, uh, there will be a 50 basis point heights. Look. So, and, and it could be even more look, in that sense. Look. Hopefully it's not, 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 not. This, these are always expectations. Look. So for sure, the, the, the Fed is also, I mean, behind the curve look, in the sense. Look. If they come too strongly, uh, if the market is able to accept a 50 basis point, I, I, mean, I guess uh, you will see you will see much jittery in the market itself, but of course uh, that, that eventually will flows down into the, the consumer market of the, the US itself. Uh, I mean, likewise, I think Singapore we also we are facing feeling the the, the 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 hard pressure on the, the the inflation now. I mean, before even before GST is coming into picture itself, everyone is also feeling that the food prices are actually going up. So I'm not so sure what's I mean uh, the government's policy in alleviating all this all this uh, pain itself. No? Yeah, but in, in the near term, we I don't foresee any uh, in, uh, recessions, unlike unless maybe the Ukraine war uh, will escalate to a new level itself. So, uh, 